Welcome to the Boosting Business Breakthroughs podcast, where coaches gain the confidence, motivation, and expertise to make their next business breakthrough. I am your host, Lori Young, certified master marketer, business growth coach, and all around truth teller. Breakthroughs can come with flashes of absolute clarity, sudden shifts in mindset, learning new skills, changes in habits, or anything else that changes the course of your coaching business. So if you're ready to be inspired and break through to your next level of growth, let's go. Welcome to episode three. I have one of my favorite people in the world with me today, and we are going to be talking about the topic of blogging. Now you might think, well, blogging has been around forever and are people really still blogging or is blogging dead? We are going to shed light on that question and we were going to hopefully convince you that blogging is still really, really important and something that you can use to help grow your coaching business Uh, drive traffic to your website, increase sales, like everything. So without further ado, I want to introduce uh, our guest today, who is Drashti Shah. As a copywriter and website designer of five plus years, Drashti has helped over 50 business owners build, scale, and grow their businesses online. Her business degree and capacity to deep dive into a project help her strategically create content that inspires your audience drives leads and generates sales. Her three mantras, and believe me, these are very true, strategy, creativity, and honest work. When not writing or traveling, you can find her with her nose in a book or elbow deep in her latest do-it-yourself project. And I'm also really happy to say um, that Drashti has been uh, a member of my team as a copywriter and a content writer for three years now, which is why she's one of my favorite people in the world. I love working with her. She is an absolute joy. And I think you're really going to love what we have to talk about today. So Drashti, I'm going to let you talk now. I'm going to ask you just to share a little Mm -hmm. bit about your story, uh, like why you do what you do and kind of like what is your superpower? All right. Amazing. I, I love what you said, Laurie. Thank you so much for your kind words. And hello. hello. Uh, as you know, I am a talker. So yes, be ready for an action packed <laughs> <laughs> episode. All right. So why I love what I do. So basically, I love helping businesses build, scale and grow. One of the reasons why I actually love working with you, because I know that is one of your reasons too, like helping people just grow their businesses online, helping coaches. And uh, that's actually the long and short of it. Uh, When I started working on this five years ago, my direction was completely different. I wanted to do something that would help people be, be more productive because that was something that I was struggling with at that time. But then I somehow ended up writing for people who wanted to help other people do things if that makes sense so in a way in my head it was like if I'm writing for coaches the impact is so much more greater because they help like a lot more people if I write for one person and they help like 10 other people I'm indirectly helping 10 other people so And yeah, and I love writing and I love design and I just love, love, love getting, I don't believe that any story in any format is nothing. I believe every story has something to say, even if you yourself think it's mundane, like the storyteller thinks it's mundane. I believe every story has something to say and I love bringing that out through words and through design. Awesome. Very cool. And tell me just a little bit about, there's a million copywriters and content writers out there, right? Tell Mm -hmm. me kind of what is your superpower? Like what makes you different than maybe other copywriters that are out there? Ooh, this one, I can speak about it so long. Let's see, I can narrow it down to one particular thing. So Mm -hmm. I would actually say strategy. Uh, 
mm. because writing copy is not just about putting pen to paper or well in this case you know just typing away on your laptop or desktop it's actually about using the right words in the right place so that they get the maximum impact mm -hmm. so there's this like very short example of you know you can use like five to six bullet points but then there's this whole strategy behind uh, what bullet point you use where you know you start with the most important one and then you also end with like the second or third most important one so you do not lose people when they're reading through you do not lose their attention in between mm -hmm. so i would say yeah strategy and just going deep 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 like super deep into what actually makes something tick like i will spend and you know that yes <laughs> you know that yes i will spend like hours and hours on research before i even start writing so i i really think that does set me apart i'm not saying other copywriters don't do that maybe they do but i do believe that is my superpower I I would 100% agree. 100% very strategic. Uh Drashti is really really good with taking a strategic approach to writing copy and will always it's just like her mind works in that way. She's constantly coming to me uh with just strategic ideas. Like, you know, I was thinking about X and I was thinking it would be a really good idea if we da 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 da, da you know, and it's like you know, it's like, yeah, that's actually a really good idea. So I can uh, really appreciate uh, Drashti's strategic mind. I can also say just from personal experience of working with Drashti that Drashti goes above and beyond mm -hmm. to please and to make sure the client is happy with their work. Like it's, I can't tell you, like I have been working with you for three years and you have not changed one single bit. You are so good with just really pouring your heart and soul into your work. And I think that that is something that can be really rare to find. So that's your Thank superpower you. as well. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. I, I'm going to write that down. That is amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh -huh. Sure. So let's talk about business breakthroughs because we are here, obviously, to help coaches. Coaches have business breakthroughs. Um, and that can come in so many different ways from, you know, learning new skills. It can come from just like an aha moment. It can come from just changing personal habits. Tell me about a business breakthrough that you've had and how it changed like the course of your business. Okay. I have just three words for it. Action over perfection. I struggled ah. with it a lot, a lot. Unless, you know, I, I would read through everything three times. I would just make sure that all the I's were dotted and all the T's crossed. And then if something slipped through, I would beat myself up. But then I realized in doing that, I'm spending so much time worrying about the stuff, whether it's a blog post that I've written, whether it's copy, whether it's a page I've designed. I just spent so much time worrying about whether it's really good or not, whether the client will like it or not, or if I'm doing it for myself, whether my audience will like it or not, that sometimes I wouldn't even, especially if it was myself, I wouldn't even put it into action and I would procrastinate. Mm. Like I would Got procrastinate it. like anything. Yeah. Or I would spend hours and hours on it before I actually hit submit. And I realized as I wrote more and more that the pieces that I actually wrote from the heart that I wrote more intuitively, that I wrote faster without overthinking or worrying about perfection mm -hmm. were the ones that got me the most results. And they were also the ones that clients actually sometimes liked the best. Yes. I, you know what, I can totally relate to that, especially even when it comes to blogging, because there's been times where and we'll talk a little bit about this where, you know, you go to write a blog piece and <clears throat> your mind starts getting in the way and you start thinking, ah, oh, what do I want to say? How do I want to say this? How do I even want to start this blog? Oh, nobody's going to read this. No one's going to be interested in this. Our mind just plays tricks on us. And it, and it makes it so difficult to get the words out on to paper and I know from experience that I've written pieces 
I walked away from it and got, oh my God, that was like so bad, right? That was just, that was terrible. But I don't have a choice. I'm a time crunch here. I've got to get this blog post out. Just go ahead, publish it. It's just one of hundreds that we've written. And someone will say to me, oh my God, I love that blog, uh, that blog post that you just wrote. Really? And I'm just like, really? Like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's so funny. So, you know, I know just from experience and working with clients that a lot of coaches can totally relate to the action over perfection. So tell me just how did you get to a point to where you started taking more action than you were procrastinating and letting perfection uh, get in the way? Yes. So, um, one was when I realized, like when it came to client work, even with you, when I realized that, okay, this is not sustainable, you know, spending so much time doing research and just doing, uh, well, not research, actually, I will never scrimp on that, yeah. but spending so much time reading and rereading posts and dotting all the I's and T's and actually not making any changes and just worrying about whether, you know, this one particular sentence is in the right place, or maybe I should place it like, two sentences lower or maybe I should do it in the next paragraph stuff like that it mm -hmm. actually prevents you from moving on to the next thing and that's what I realized like one it wasted time and two it prevented me from doing the next thing it prevented me from writing the next piece of content or moving on to my next action step and the other part was when I realized that people don't even read what you write very, very carefully. They generally skim through it to find the most important bits that they think are useful to them. So as long as we copy edit it, and that includes the blog post, as long mm -hmm. as we make it highly skimmable, people are not going to notice if you miss out on a full stop somewhere. Right. And yeah, and then there are always proofreaders like the AI proofreaders that again, you take their advice with a grain of salt, but they'll at least underline the important bits for you. And you can see for yourself if you know, you need to change it or not. Right. So that also, yeah, saved up on a lot of time. And then I could actually, I, I just recently did a work, workshop on blogging and I got it out and promoted and I had the whole workshop prepared in just five days. Mm. And I still had 17 people attend and I had rave reviews and I, that, that was actually when I realized I'm like, okay, it's not necessary to really hold everything really tight to your chest and overthink every step, like just move it along. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And we can talk a little bit more about <clears throat> that when it comes to blogging, as we kind of get into this whole topic. So why don't we start with Why? Like, why do blogging? Um, let's, let's just talk about the importance of blogging and how it can help you have a business breakthrough, how it can help you grow your business, how it can help you get more clients. Let's just talk a little bit about that. Oh, my God. Yes. So you know how people say that you do not own social media? Yes. That is really true. I, I had a client who actually had like 5K followers on her account. Mm -hmm. She did not have a blog. Thankfully, she did have an email list. But one day her account got hacked and she lost all of those 5K followers. And it was very tough to recover from that. But now just imagine if you have something similar to that, but on your website, on something that you own and you have an extended version of it where you can actually, you know, which is a clickable Thing, no link in bio stuff, no link in the comments stuff. You actually have the links to lead, to lead people to wherever they want to go on that single page. That is what your blog post does for you. You own it. You can use it to build your no like and trust factor. And then the best part is you can actually repurpose that blog post into a, to content for your social media. You know, you can do it the other way around. So, and then you can create podcasts from it. You can even create your own workshop workshop from it. So there, there are just so many things. And you the most important thing is it actually leads people directly to your website where yes. you can then convert them into leads. You can send them to your lead magnets. You can even send them directly to offers or to contact you. And yeah, the, just the, the opportunities from blog posts or from blogging are limitless. And I would say way, way, way more than anything else. Yes. So let me just um, 
<clears throat> mention something. So as I mentioned before, Drashi has been uh, on my team for three years now. I started my business back in 2016. So it's been seven years now. And I have always been a writer. And I started blogging as kind of a cornerstone marketing uh, piece from the very, very beginning. So I, when I first put my website out, I took some old articles that I had written and put them up on my website as blogs. And from there, I very strategically said, I will be blogging on a regular basis. I think at that particular time, I had decided I would be blogging every other week. I felt like that was doable for me and mm -hmm. I could follow through on that and actually make that happen. Since then, we have moved to blogging weekly. Uh, now, I have two copywriters uh, uh, and content writers on my team, and so we all share that. So I don't want... I don't want listeners to think, oh my God, like you're blogging weekly. That's like a lot of content to churn out. Yes, it is. And I will say two things to that. If you love to write, it's not that difficult if you get yourself into a rhythm. And secondly, you can always hire people to write blogs for you. So um, anyway, I, I just want to mention that I have been blogging for seven years and there are probably hundreds of blogs on my blog at this point. And I will tell you without a doubt that people are visiting my blog all the time. I am getting leads from LinkedIn. They've seen my blog or my articles on LinkedIn, which is basically the same thing. And they like, oh, I read your blog or I read your article and I, you know, I totally loved what you had to say. And they book a call and it becomes a lead. So I like what Drashti had said about the limitless ways that you can use a blog. Not only is it driving traffic uh, to your website, but you can repurpose that content into social content, into podcast episodes, into newsletters for your email list, into articles on LinkedIn or Medium or, or any yeah. other place, maybe guest uh, guest article writing, social content, obviously. There's just so mm -hmm. many you, videos you Video can uh, videos. Yeah. yeah, you can take your blogs and turn turn uh, turn pieces of it into a video script and record videos. So there's just so much that you can do with blogging. So let's talk about, I guess, how do you get started with, with blogging? Like, what is the best way to just, you know, get going? Uh, if, you, if you decide, okay, fine, I'm going to do it. I enjoy writing and I'm going to do it. Like, what's the best way to get started? I just say take action, like literally take action. Do not overthink. I keep on repeating that because I've gone through it. Do not overthink, take action. All you need is an understanding of how your customers' minds work, what their pain points are, and what they need to know from you or what questions they might have about your offer or the pain points that, you know, what are you blogging for? What's What your offer is? So your pain points, how do you help them resolve those pain points and you can just easily create a blog from that like for example if if you're a mindset coach right you would know what your audience or you would actually look into it there are dozens of posts out there if nothing else there's this really small trick that i tell people they can do just open up google put in your niche put in your put in your topic and see what comes up, see the first page of Google, see the related searches and see what comes up because that will tell you what people are looking for in your niche, what kind of information that people are looking for. And once you look at that, I guarantee you, you'll have those ideas for your blog posts. Yes. I, and I like what you, what you said about looking at your offer because you don't want to be blogging for just no reason at all. It needs to be very purposeful and it needs to lead to one of your offers. So one of the things that I always tell clients is think about 
one, your offers, like what, you know, in our case, for instance, we basically have three offers, content marketing, website and funnel uh, development and launch management services. So every blog that we write is related to one of those offers. It also happens to be the topics that we are experts in and that we want to be known for, right? You don't, for me to go out and write a blog post about, um, Chica. I'm trying to think of something, I'm trying to think of something like, uh, Chica, why not Chica? <laughs> what'd you say? Like, yeah, right, you know? exactly. <laughs> right about the, right about, uh, you know, uh, yeah, Chica, my dog like Chica. <laughs> <laughs> and has absolutely nothing to do with, you know, could I write about Chica? Absolutely. I, I could have hilarious stories uh, to tell about uh, Chica, but it has nothing to do with my business. It has nothing to do with my expertise. So I always tell people when you're starting a blog, identify, you know, three to five categories that you want to be a thought leader on and make sure that those categories are leading to an offer. Because when you're writing blogs, one of the things that is really important is that you are also promoting your lead magnets. So if you have a lead magnet, for instance, on, you know, 10 mindset tips to overcome, you know, perfectionism, for instance, you don't want to write something about something completely unrelated and then promote a lead magnet about overcoming perfectionism right? The two are not tied together. So strategically, they don't align. So I, that's why I always say, make sure that you are keeping your offers in mind and keeping your categories of what you want to be known for, what you want to be a thought leader on, so that everything is aligned. That makes total sense. Yeah. And yeah, then I, I think, I, the, I just, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And then the second piece of like getting started with a blog is your content calendar. Like you have got to put a content calendar in place. One of the things that I know back in the day when I first started blogging, <clears throat> I would go kind of like week to week or every other week to every other week. And I would decide like on the fly in the moment, like what I was going to be writing about. Inevitably, it comes up and you're like, oh, here we go. What should I write about now? Like what, you know, and you get like into this space of like writer's block. Like, I don't know what I should write about. And you spend too much time just thinking about what you should write about. Well, if you put together a content calendar where you're planning in advance all of the different topics that you are going to be writing about, with the names of the blogs and everything and which category they are and which uh, offer you're going to be promoting within that blog, it becomes really easy when you go to sit down to blog. It's like, okay, this is what we're writing about today. And so maybe you can, maybe you can speak to that because you know kind of what it's like to have a content calendar in front of you when you go to mm -hmm. sit down and write a blog. Yes, yes, for sure. Like especially for um, AOBM, we have this extensive, like we, we plan title ideas, if not days, weeks and months in advance so that when the time comes to write, we have like a title idea in place. So we have the hashtags. Well, the hashtags comes after, after we've written, but we have all of that in this huge Excel spreadsheet we have and it doesn't it is definitely not as overwhelming as it sounds because all you need to do is have your five content pillars you can even start with three you do not need to have five in the get go yet have your three content pillars decide that okay you will and have them alternating so content pillar one two three one two three stuff like that and then you just need to go in and fill in your topics in those content pillars so when the time comes to actually sit and write you can just look at the topic and then you can start. And if you even want to do some advanced work on that, have an outline ready. I know the number of times, you know, we have a special notes section in the content calendar where Laurie will put her thoughts in, where I will put my thoughts in and we just go back and forth. And sometimes we literally have the outline ready before I even start to 
sit and type and that mm. actually yeah that has been a huge huge help because then you don't need to think on what important bits go where you already know that and you just have to fill in the gaps so yeah a right. content calendar is definitely important i know that one of the things that that's probably going through our listeners heads is how do i find the time to to blog is there any kind of advice that you could give listeners on how to carve out the time and maybe some time saving tips that they could use so that they can be consistent? Because if we're not consistent with blogging, it's not going to work. Blogging is a long game, just about like any kind of content creation. It's a long game. And so it requires consistency. Let's talk about some maybe some time saving tips that we can use to be consistent mm -hmm. with blogging. Right. Awesome. So for time saving tips, the, so the, the most difficulties or the maximum amount of issues that people have, generally, if it comes to myself or like the number of clients that I've worked with over the years is about actually coming up with what goes inside the blog. Like even if you have the title idea ready, you keep on thinking what goes inside it. Mm -hmm. So what I ask them to do is, and what I do myself for my content is that I have, so I do it in my phone. Uh, some of them actually have diaries and we keep it with ourselves wherever we go, right? Uh, especially during your client calls or your con or conversations with people in your niche or when you're just going about your work. And if you're doing social media, when you're creating content for social media, just keep it in the back of your mind that, okay, I do have a blog post to write. And then when you talk with your clients, they themselves, or if you're on a coaching call, they themselves will tell you what issues they have. Right. And then you can just note it down in your notepad or pen or paper or phone, wherever it's quicker for you to write it down. Just note it down, think on it, and you can create entire blog posts out of it. And Neil Patel has this really great blog post structure where you can write blog posts really fast. Mm -hmm. And he says that if you are prepared in advance, so if you know what you're going to write about, which is where the notepad will come in handy because your clients will talk about the problems. They will talk about their own experiences and you will also be talking, you will solving certain issues when you're talking to them, right? Or people will ask you questions in your DMs, in your social media, or you will be reading up on your own niche or your own topic and you'll come across ideas there. So you'll have your list of ideas ready. So all you need after that is like this little, little block structure where and your audience research and the block structure goes something like this. Again, this is where action over impact, uh, action over perfection comes into play. Mm -hmm. Set yourself on a timer. So you don't need to carve out hours and hours of research, as, uh, hours and hours of time to write blog posts, especially if you're just starting out. Like mm -hmm. set a timer. Uh, so just carve out maybe one hour every week. So first of all, okay, let's, I'm going to come down a bit, go further and let's go step by step. Okay. So you have your ideas ready, you have your topics ready. Then you need to determine sustainably how much blog, how many blog posts that you can do, right? Mm -hmm. So experts say, like, honestly, there are so many opinions out there. So you really need to find what works for you for your schedule because you don't want to overwhelm yourself and then end up not doing anything. Right. So I would say if you want to be really sustainable, start with one or two blog posts a month. I would say two but it's totally up to you, but at least one a month. And if you're doing one, then make it really big and long and mm -hmm. nice so that you get more SEO juice. Mm -hmm. But I say start with two blog posts a month. Maybe do it like maybe you can schedule two hours or three hours in your calendar on one particular day a week and do both of the blog posts. Or you can just have, you know, one or two hours set aside a particular day so like for example every monday 10 to 12 you'll work on your blog post and then just sit there and then just start use the structure because uh, that structure says you can write a blog post in 45 minutes using it and it goes something like this so take the timer uh maybe take a stopwatch whatever you want or a timer on your phone and then you start with the blog title idea so there are a number of blog title ideas already out there 
uh, at Amazing OBM, we uh, have a really great blog post on how hooks catch fish, or in other words, you know, so maybe refer back to that blog post. Uh, we have really great hook examples out there that you can use as your um, blog title ideas. So that is sorted. Uh, set a five minute timer for that. No more than that. You do not want to revisit it. So set a five minute timer, write your blog title. That's it. Then set another five minute ti a timer and write your introduction. Your introduction should tell in like it should su summarize what your blog post is about, why it would help people and maybe a personal just add personality to your entire blog post. So start and the best part, the best way to start it is through your introduction. So yeah, five minute timer, what the blog post is about, what it will help people with, why it's important and maybe a personal experience related to it. It just, it can be one or two lines, no more. Don't overthink it, five minute timer, write it. And then we come to, that's the introduction. And then we come to the body of the post. And this is where you set a 30 minute timer. And if you're just starting out, start with like three tips. Mm -hmm. or three steps or three ways to help your client achieve a certain goal and mm -hmm. you make sure you give them at least one micro transformation or micro win so that the client knows it can even be as simple as inspiring them you know with a really awesome quote that you throw in there because it will make them feel good so that is what will establish in your clients in your audiences in your readers head that you know what you're talking about and oh it actually works but yeah, so just set a 30 minute timer for the body and think about how you can go about solving whatever you've written in the title and list it down in the form because that's the easiest and the fastest. Just list, list it down in the form of steps. I say three if you want to do so 10 minutes on each step, bam, you're done. Um, if you have a lead magnet, add it to one of the steps and make sure it relates to that step though. We do not want a random lead magnet in there. Add a quote to break down, you know, you don't want a body of text. So add a quote in, in, middle, in the middle, add a statistic, and then that's it, your 30 minutes set up, and then um, set another timer for five minutes, because that's, that's what we have left, right? In 45 minutes, you have more five minutes left, and in those five minutes, write the conclusion, and Conclusion will always tie in your entire blog together. Maybe repeat the most important points that your clients or your readers should understand. And you always, always end with a CTA, a call to action. It can mm -hmm. be something as simple as a link to your contact form, or it can be, again, a link to your lead magnet. Okay. So yeah, that's it. Yeah. 45 minutes and you are done. And this way, because of the timer, you do not overthink it. That's the main part, like you do not overthink it. And then because you've set aside one or two hours for your blog post, you will have a ton of time after that to actually revisit your post and then fine tune it or even make it bigger. But these 45 minutes, you have like really great structure mm -hmm. going. Awesome. Awesome. And I think sometimes I know some uh, one thing that Drashti does, uh, and sometimes I do this, some, sometimes I don't. But one thing I know Drashti does is she will write the blog post and then she will come back the next day mm -hmm. and read the blog post to to fine tune it. <clears throat> because I think we get a different perspective. So when we're writing it, we're so like involved in writing it and we kind of lose uh, perspective and we might lose. We get very focused. And I think when we like put it away and come back to it, then we have like the opportunity for fresh perspectives, right? Or we read it and go, oh, that doesn't sound right. Or that's not reading right. Or, oh, what about this idea? Let me add that to this. Yeah. So yeah. it's a and great way it, to fine tune. Yes. And it will even help you catch certain typographical errors or grammatical mistakes that you made. Like, I do not remember which blog post it was. But once instead of absolutely, I had written absolutely, and I do not know why. <laughs> I do not know how that happened. 
<laughs> but we we got it before we had published so yeah definitely go back <laughs> go back in and reread your blog post again that right. does help and if it helps like read it out loud you know because yes. you need to make your blog posts conversational because the person on the other end also needs to understand it and if you read it loud out loud you will know if you know your sentences make sense or if you need to like chop them into shorter more readable bits Right. I have a really funny story that I have to share. Uh <laughs> this was a few a few years ago. Um I was uh writing a blog post. It must have been like a Friday because like a lot of times I'll have like a glass of wine or a cocktail or something on Friday to end end the week. And I was drinking a glass of wine while I was writing my blog. <laughs> and to me like it sounded totally fine, right? I was like in the zone, right? You know, just enjoying my glass of wine, writing my blog post. The next day, I read it back to my spouse and she was like, what? Like, <laughs> obviously that glass of wine was affecting your writing because this makes no sense. <laughs> so, you know, definitely uh, don't drink a glass of wine when you're trying to <laughs> write a blog post. Uh, I never did that again. Uh, but anyway, just something uh, funny to share. Let's talk a little bit about AI, because I know that I was just on a call uh, yesterday with someone and I was explaining to them that, you know, we write content, we write blog posts, blah, 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 blah. She's like, so do you use AI to write your blog post? And it's mm -hmm. like, OK, here we go. Here's the here's the <laughs> question. Right. I am sure that lots of people out there are using AI to write blog posts. We do not recommend that. What no. we do use AI for that can be really helpful is getting down your content outline. A lot of times I will, especially if I'm kind of like in a, a zone of like a just maybe writer's block, can't get started, I will go to AI and say, Hey, AI, you know, I am writing a blog post on X for coaches. Give me 25 ways to X, right? And it just spits out a bunch of content. That to me is helpful for saying, okay, like I like this piece. I like that piece. I like this piece. It gives me an outline that I can work from. And then I go back and I infuse my own voice. I use my own words. I infuse storytelling. I give examples, um, something that makes the blog post more interesting. And today, you know, Google is recognizing AI generated content. So you don't want to use AI to write your blog post. You want it to sound like you and you mm -hmm. want it to have storytelling, um, because that's what keeps your readers engaged. Anything yeah. else you want to add about like AI, yeah. like maybe how you've used AI with blog for blog posts? Mm -hmm. uh, sure. But before that, I really like, I just read this article recently about Google and how it cracks down on posts that are using AI and mm -hmm. the algorithm and the Google robots, as I like to call them, actually go into your posts and look for experiences. So mm -hmm. they don't just look for I, you, me statements. They actually look for sentences that sound as if they've come from a human and that are personal. So that is where your storytelling comes into it. That is why your personality, your authenticity comes into play. And the other part is that AI, is not writing anything by itself. It mm. is picking up bits and pieces from the blog posts and the information that is already out there on the internet. Mm -hmm. So whatever AI gives you, it is not new. It will not have your expertise. It will not have uh, your perspective. It will only have this jumbled up perspective of hundreds of others who've written on similar topics to yours. So it may not even pass a simple plagiarism test. And we all know that Google already frowns upon plagiarism. So that is also something that you really need to focus on. Yeah, do a little bit of research, maybe get some content ideas, some uh, a structure, an outline, and then write it yourself. Uh, yeah, definitely. Or, 
exactly i i even the, so there's this one thing uh, so i i'm writing the uh, a blog post for um someone who does card reading right mm-hmm. and uh, yeah and so for that i i really because i am not extremely familiar with the topic i had a reading done myself just so that i could get the experience and write properly about it mm-hmm. but i was still struggling to come up with really good examples so i actually put an entire situation in ai and then i asked ai to come up with a two line example for that particular situation because i just couldn't come up with an example but all of the rest was me and then the example that ai gave i just gave it my own spin i wrote it in my client's voice mm-hmm. and yeah i think it saved me hours of time time because sometimes you know you really get down into lost into the rabbit hole of thinking like one particular thing and as easy as it is as it is it just doesn't come to you that is where you use ai mm-hmm. okay cool so we've talked about a lot so far. We've talked about the importance of blogging and hopefully we have convinced you that it's a really important thing that you can do in your business. We've talked about uh starting a content calendar so you can stay organized and to start with two blog posts uh per month and as you get better and better, you can increase that to weekly uh blogging. Mm-hmm. We've talked about how to set the timer for 45 minutes and get a basic structure of a blog. We've talked a little bit about <clears throat> AI and how AI can uh help help you save some time and maybe just help you uh have a little bit more ideas. The last thing that we're going to touch on is SEO. And we're not going to go deep into this uh, subject because it can be uh, overwhelming. And Drashti has got an amazing resource for you that we can, that you can use to understand SEO. But let's just talk a little bit about what is SEO and why you need to be keeping that in mind when you're writing your blog post. All right. So oh, this is my absolute favorite topic in the world. I've already done like two workshops on it, so I can go on for ages, but I, <laughs> I'll just give like the brief. Um, so SEO is basically the juice that will actually get your blog posts to show up on Google or on whatever search engines that people are looking for information on. Because however amazingly you write, however much of an expertise that you give out however many words you use, however much of an effort you put into it, it will not matter if nobody can see that you actually wrote it. So that is where mm-hmm. SEO comes in. That is, SEO is something that will push your blog post up in ranks from the hundreds out there and maybe help you land them on the first, second or third page of Google. But obviously we aim for the first because first and second pages are the ones that people view the most. So Mm -hmm. that is what SEO is. And there are lots of aspects to SEO. There's on-page SEO, off-page SEO, there's website SEO. But since we're focusing on blog posts right now, I can maybe talk about three really quick things you can do without the overwhelm to Mm -hmm. sort of boost your SEO in your blog post. That'd be awesome. Okay, awesome. So one of them is adding internal and external links. Okay. Internal links are the links that you, so you link a word to another one of your pages in your websites, Mm -hmm. mostly other blog posts that you wrote. Uh, External links are the links where, you know, you link a phrase or a paragraph and you send people. So when they click on that word or that paragraph, people are sent to a website that is not yours but it has an expertise in, you know, whatever they talk about, but something that is related related to whatever you're writing about, of course. So, for example, uh, for AOBM, if we write about launches, then the external link, maybe I I remember sending one, using one of the external links as, you know, uh, HubSpot, because HubSpot is really great with marketing details. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so basically you send people outside your website too, I will not go into why it's good for SEO because that'll be like a whole right. other topic. But yeah, exactly. so internal links, external links, and uh, try to use your keyword. Use your keywords repeatedly in your blog post. A keyword is 
the main idea or the main topic of your blog post it can be just one word or it can be multiple words for example uh, how to write a blog for seo so in this case the keyword will be seo because that is what it's basically what people type into the search bar mm -hmm. whenever they're looking for information so if you hit on those exact words the right. chances of you ranking are higher so just make sure you use your keyword multiple times in your post but don't make it forced and if you're actually providing value to people it will just automatically flow you know you'll mention right. it and you won't even realize it so you don't need to worry about it that much either you know if you're actually talking about the talking about the topic that you've actually written oh, wow i right. said actually so many times <laughs> <laughs> but yeah these are the three, uh, three things internal links external links and keywords and it's also really good to use your keyword in your title in your headings not all of them just some of them and maybe in the first 300 words of your blog post. Awesome. And mm -hmm. let me, a quick, quick, quick tip on, on keyword. One of the ways to, to do research on keywords and, and to know like what is a good keyword to use, I use Uber Suggest. That is Neil Patel's uh, <clears throat> little keyword uh, tool. And you can just go in and type in the keyword and it will tell you how many times a month a person searches on that keyword. If it's zero or a hundred, it's probably not a good keyword. Now, it could be if it's like a thousand, even though that's like a low number compared to like a hundred thousand, it still could be a good keyword because only a thousand people are on are searching for it and you don't have as much competition. But if it's a mm -hmm. hundred thousand, it's a good keyword, but you're gonna have more competition competition yeah so, so that's like just a sweet a, spot. yeah yeah so it's just finding that exactly that sweet spot so um drashti i'm going to drop a link into the show notes um tell me just a little bit about the free gift that you have to offer uh the listeners uh yes so i call it the ultimate guide or the ultimate seo checklist for your blog posts so it's a very very easy to understand guide uh, where I just talk about all of the best practices for SEO for your blog posts for when you hit publish on your blog post or when you write your blog post. And okay. then at the very end, I have this one page checklist, which you can just print out and keep right next to you. And once you're done writing your blog post, you can just go through the checklist and make sure um, that you've covered everything. And it's it's really easy to read, easily digestible, and yeah, it will definitely give your blog post the SEO juice that it requires to rank higher and higher. And okay. it tells you about how to optimize your blog post for both humans and for the robots. Ah, for robots. Okay, cool. <laughs> Very cool. <clears throat> so there will be a link for that uh, in the show notes. So this has been amazing. Um, I always like mm -hmm. to end the the show with just like a little bit of fun. So tell me a favorite book, podcast, or show that you are currently binging right now. Oh, I actually have the book right here. It's, okay. Well, so I'm binging on two books. One of them is my guilty pleasure. It's like a historical romance set in the Regency era in England. <laughs> Okay. But then the other one, and this is the one I'm reading for the second time, is this is marketing from Seth Gordon. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm pronouncing the surname right. I have I'm horrible. I at think it. so, but uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> yes, but it basically tells you all about how to get into the minds of people that you're actually trying to help or influence and how to use your words to get them to take action and how to tell do storytelling more meaningfully and every time i read it i find something new inside it so, awesome yes. very cool i'm gonna definitely have to add that one to my list so any other parting words before we go that you want to want to say Oh, this just this has been a real pleasure, and I really do hope that what we talked about helps someone out. Uh, do look into the checklist. I promise you, it is. I've added like tons of value into it. And remember, action over perfection. Put pen to paper. Start writing. Do not worry about the results. Just make sure your blog 
post is focused on what your audience needs and is related to your offer and then your words will take care of the rest awesome perfect mm-hmm. thank you so much drashti for uh for being here and it was thank just a pleasure doing me. this uh, episode with you thank you so much for having me of course that's a wrap on today's episode thanks for listening to the boosting business breakthroughs podcast Want to hear more business breakthrough ideas? I'll be back next week with a new episode to help you grow your coaching business. If you enjoyed listening, make sure you subscribe, leave us a rating, and tell all your coach friends where to find us. Head over to boostingbusinessbreakthroughs.com to learn more. Thanks for listening. And remember, your next business breakthrough is waiting for you.